Hello, my name's Finn, and welcome to this episode of Monzo Insider. I often lay awake at night, asking myself some of life's most curious of questions. Questions like, where did I lose my Game Boy all those years ago? And how does my Monzo card pay for things so seamlessly? And when can I use my phone to pay with Monzo? Or why does coffee make you poo? Well, in this episode of Monzo Insider, I'm going to attempt to find the answers to most of these questions because I'm really curious to find out what's inside these things and, and how do we actually make contactless payments and what's in store uh, for the future of Monzo cards. Who better to answer these burning questions than Richard from Monzo? Hi, so my name is Richard, so I'm a back-end software engineer here at Monzo. Day to day that means designing, researching, testing and deploying the software that powers your Monzo debit card and I'm also responsible for the what happens inside the chip on the card. So the Monzo cards are actually called dual interface cards, which means that you can either communicate with them through these six electrical contacts on the chip. And there's also a antenna, a contactless antenna, which runs around the edge of the card, which can be powered on by a terminal, which powers the chip, which then enables it to send and receive radio waves uh, at the same frequency as like an Oyster card or a smart card that you might use to unlock a door in your office or something. So when you go to make a contactless purchase with your card, it speaks a language called EMV. And when you hover over the payment terminal, it tells the card things like how much it wants to charge you and in what currency. And using its secure element, the card generates a digital cryptogram. The card then hands that cryptogram over to the terminal, which sends it to Monzo, and if it matches the cryptogram generated inside Monzo's servers, then they know it's a genuine Monzo card and the transaction is approved. But that's not all these cards can do. There's even more tech inside the new current account debit cards. Uh, but to explain this one, I need to find the answer to the question, where is my Game Boy? Hey Stella. Just a quick one. Do you know where my Game Boy ever went? Yeah. No, the actual Game Boy. This, mm, I broke it. <sighs> anyway, did you know that this Monzo card has around the same computing power as that Game Boy? Really? Yep, I know, it's cool. Inside this little chip, there's a 16-bit CPU, six kilobytes of RAM, and 260 kilobytes of memory. So that gives them about as much processing power as a Nintendo Game Boy, which is pretty crazy. Another feature on the new current account debit cards is that they're actually read and write capable, which means merchants are actually able to store their own data on your card. So an example of this might be a contactless gig ticket or like a public transport travel card. Um, it's quite a new technology, there aren't really any implementations of it yet, um, but it's kind of like our API. We like to get, get stuff out there and see what people can do with it. So Monza and MasterCard seem like the perfect match for making the bank of the future. But what does it actually take to be able to start issuing MasterCard cards? First, uh, you have to be a licensed bank, and then you have to join and become a member of the MasterCard network. We also had to configure and certify the application that runs inside the chips. So for this, we send them across to an electrical testing lab in the Netherlands, um, who run a whole series of tests, and that proves that they'll work um, reliably in, in terminals all around the world. But what about mobile payments? The ability to pay for things on your phone using Monzo is the most requested feature from users, and it's coming to the current account really soon. So when you sign up, um, we send you out a new plastic card in the mail. Um, that can take a day or two to arrive. So uh, once we have mobile payments, um, we'll be able to give you a virtual card which you can load onto your phone immediately and start using your account straight away, even before the plastic card arrives. Mobile payments are more secure too, because when you use your phone to pay for things, it generates a temporary card number called a token. And this is different to your real card number, which means your details are kept safe and they're never shared with the merchant. And if you have a fingerprint scan on your phone, you can authorize payments which are greater than the £30 limit. We also have real-time notifications, so when you, uh, you, you can be alerted if, if someone's taken your card. We have our fraud engine, and if you enable um, location-based security in the app, we can also tell if someone's making a purchase but it's a long way away from your phone, uh, we can also flag that, that it's, it, it's a high likelihood of being a fraudulent transaction. So, smarter contactless cards and mobile payments with even greater security and convenience. I've had great fun learning how Monzo really are making banking awesome for all of us. But if you're curious to find out more, then head over to the community. And if you want to host a future episode of Monzo Insider, then check out the details below. But now to find the answer to my last remaining question. 